Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I'm going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. How many people do you think would come to daily Mass if every time they went to communion they would get a thousand dollar bill? They would make a big effort, right? And yet sadly we see in our culture today and in our church a loss in the faith of the Eucharist. People don't really believe it's the real presence. They say only like 30% and even some people say lower than that, 30% believe that Jesus is really present in the Eucharist. And when we receive him in the Eucharist, it's far more valuable than $1,000. But how easy it is for, for us, all of us, myself included, to take that for granted. To really not ponder the depth and the mystery of all that. There's a very interesting book. It was called From Chrysostom to Apostolic Times. And so what that means is Chrysostom is when society and the culture kind of supported values. In other words, when I was growing up, for example, if I would have moved in with my girlfriend, I would have been seen as a heathen. I mean, I would have been seen as, what kind of person are you? Why, I can't believe you did that. And, and I mean, this would, this would be society at large. Now, if people don't move in with their girlfriend, there's something wrong with them. The society has lost its way. And what's happened is a, a, a hedonism, a, a, a paganism has infected the dimensions of everyday living. In the Old Testament, they had the gods of Moloch. And one of his whole things was, you sacrifice your children to Moloch so that you'll be blessed. And people did it. And in our world today, how many people offer up their children because... They want to try and save their job, or it's more convenient, or it's, you know, it's going to impact my life in a negative way. Because they're not bad people. They've just been deceived. They haven't really understood the depth and the beauty of who we are and what God has for us. And the good, thing, the good news is, it's never too late to recognize this. I know of a person that, that, I, I, uh, that I know, and the person was a faithful Catholic. I mean, going to Mass, raising their children Catholic, all the rest. I mean, day in and day out. And just within the last few years, she's found time to spend praying before the Blessed Sacrament, being more open to these things. And it's opened up a whole new vista for her life. And a joy that she never knew was open to us when we just put our faith and our trust in God. I could be mistaken, but when we get a little older, we can't do everything we could used to do, right? And usually it takes us a lot longer to do this, the little things that we wanted to do, right? But as long as we have our wits about us, we can direct our mind and our heart towards God. So never underestimate the power and the impact of your prayers. If you're able, I just encourage you to try and come to daily Mass. Pray for our world, because it needs it desperately. So this little book was called From Chrysostom Till Apostolic Time. So Chrysostom is when society supported everything. 
Society saw that it was good to be virtuous, that the end does not justify the means. If someone's rioting in the streets, they get arrested and they go to jail. Now, it depends on what political party you're in. You know, then, then if they don't like your political party, yeah, they can arrest you, but boy, if they like your political party or they can use you, then, you know, it doesn't matter. It's darkness. It's diabolical. And so, we've gone back to apostolic times, which is hedonism. The Roman Empire. You know, Christianity was not prevalent. They, they had their false gods. And, and St. Augustine said those, those false gods were actually demons. When the, the, uh, the pagans would go in to pray to these statues and different things, it was diabolical forces that were causing things to happen and giving these people faith in these, these things. But when Christ came, all that stuff went away in about 300 years. And for centuries and centuries, Paganism was seen for what it was, superstition at best, and diabolical at worst. And now we're ebbing back to that. We could even find ourselves in a situation where Christians are going to be persecuted, and not just canceled. Hopefully it's just kind of a personal thing where they kind of make fun of you and you think you're kind of crazy and stuff because you respect life and, and respect you know, marriage and all these different things. But God has this. You know, the, the, the apparitions, some of the apparitions suggest that there'll be an enlightenment of conscience. And if we're alive when it happens, we'll see how woefully we've responded to God's grace. But take heart. Never despair. Mercy is for everyone. Christ has covered it all. So if you come to realize that maybe, maybe I could have done a lot more or a little more, God does not want you to spare. Christ has given his life for us. He's paid the price for our blindness, for our sin, all that. And he never says no to those who seek his mercy. Judas' greatest sin, I believe, was not that he betrayed Christ. His greatest sin was he didn't think God could forgive him. Mercy is the heart of the law. So my brothers and sisters, because I say brothers, you know, even though there's no brother here except me, but... We are accompanied with a host of angels and saints when we celebrate Mass. That's what we believe. We're never alone. Even if I have just one person here, we're, we're filled with angels and, and saints in this glorious celebration of the Eucharist. This is, this is our faith. This is what we believe. And let us never lose heart. Let us be filled with the joy of Christ. And, and let us pray that political ideology never blinds us. And what I mean is, I'm not talking about just one side. I'm talking right or left. We need to take our moorings from Christ, not from ideologies. And we need to do what we can to recognize that you, as I tell all my children, like the first in school, you are an infinitely valuable, one-of-a-kind masterpiece created by God for a mission. You really are. And maybe this time, your mission in life is just to pray when you get up. Maybe offer the rosary for those who have fallen away. Deepen your faith. Find time to pray. And discover the depth of God's love for you. So that you can help others discover the depth of God's love for them. Not easy. We heard in the gospel today, Thomas, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And she's, Thomas, you've been with me three freaking years here, man. What gives? So if, it, if Thomas can be a, a little bit slow getting it, right? We need to be a little patient with ourselves getting it, right? And it gives us all hope. Never lose hope. And be filled with the joy of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples. We pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. For all who hold elected office, may God give them the spirit of civility and courage, we pray to the Lord. We think of the people, the poor suffering in Ukraine and all those regions of the world that suffer persecution of any kind. May God protect them, we pray to the Lord. 
for each of us here. May God strengthen us in our heart for servant leadership, we pray to the Lord. For all who have recently died, may God give them eternal rest in heaven, we pray to the Lord. And let us pray for Jerry, Jerry Bader, the intention, Bader, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Let all corruption in our world be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power and be replaced by leaders who respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. For all those in hospitals and suffering and, and have all kinds of concerns, and for all those who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 